think meditation is hard, do me a favor. Take a slow, deep breath in. And now breathe out. Congratulations. You just meditated. Hi, I'm Crystal Joukowsky, and this is Breathe In, Breathe Out, a weekly mindfulness and meditation podcast for anyone ready to own their own shit and find a little peace while doing it. Hi, this is Crystal Joukowsky, and before we get into the episode, I just needed to do a quick little um, heads up for you. When you are working with energetic things, sometimes electronics go a little funky, and that is exactly what happened in this interview with Judith Costa. So allowing for humanity, allowing for challenges, allowing for shifts in our energy. This was an unbelievably powerful experience for me. And I really hope that you enjoy the episode. And then there is a follow up. I am doing a follow up. So I hope that you listen to that and get a little more depth into what I really experienced. So without further ado, I give you the next episode of Breathe In, Breathe Out. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Breathe In, Breathe Out. I'm Crystal Joukowsky, and as always, you know that I am beyond delighted and thrilled that you are here with me, taking a moment for personal self-care and growth to explore different avenues of life and things that can help us move forward and connect with ourselves and be even more aware and alert and just true to our own beings. And um, in the vein of introducing you guys to new things and new opportunities for self-care and expansion, today we have Judith Costa on. She is an unconditional love coach, a self-love expert, a seminar leader, writer, and speaker with a master's degree in analytical psychology and psychotherapy, along with an MBA. She's a certified consultant and teacher of the Akashic Records, a Reiki master, a past life regression therapist, and a certified happiness trainer. Judith specializes in helping her clients have better relationships with themselves, which then transforms their lives, allowing them to create abundance, well-being, better relationships, and become even more happier if that's even possible. So without further ado, hi, Judith, welcome. Hi, Crystal. I'm so happy to be here with you finally today. <laughs> it's been a little while. I'm so excited to just sit down and chit chat and, and just dig in a little bit deeper to it, what it is you do. And then you guys later, she's actually going to open my Akashic record. So I'm telling you what we're excited about today. This is fabulous. So. In what you do, you say that you're an unconditional love coach and a self-love expert. So what is your definition of unconditional love? It's love without boundaries, without limits. Love no matter what. I love you because I choose to love you. And I choose to love everyone and everything without restrictions. We are used to just give our love to those that we feel that we like or are related to us but love is abundant and expansive and you can share it with anyone you want and if i call myself love coach people think that i fix relationships and i don't i work individually with people to feel them connected with the love that they already have inside of themselves. Maybe they feel disconnected, they have forgotten that they are the source of love, but we are all full of love because we are made of it. It's the energy of, of source. I love that. We are love. That is where it comes from. That is the fount that you can give from you've got it. It's in you. It already exists. You just have to remember how to tap into. I don't want to say learn because I feel like at some point we knew how to tap into that and then we kind of forgot. So maybe we can learn how to re-tap into that. Um, That's like a lamp that you have and it's perfect and you say it's not working. I don't have light. And then one day you remember that you have to plug it in or turn it on 
<laughs> and it's, it's not that it's not working, it's that we have forgotten how to really connect. That's it. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Uh, you're also a certified happiness coach. What does that mean? Uh, happiness trainer. Um, I did that. I love to learn, as you can see in the nice introduction that you share with the listeners. And it's because love and happiness are really interconnected. Both are daily decisions that you make in the moment you open your eyes every day in the morning and put the feet on the floor. You decide to be happy. That's the inner joy. It's not the happiness that comes from the external circumstances helping and everything is working and I'm, I'm doing well and uh, then I'm happy. And I'm happy until something happens, then it's bad. I label it as bad. I don't want it. I don't like it. And then I'm unhappy. You know, I'm talking about this real connection with yourself that comes through love, where you was start seeing life with a different light, with a different perspective, where you, where you are more like in acceptance of what is that brings the inner joy. You don't fight with life, you surrender, you feel guided. And that's one of the good things about working with your Akashic Records. And we will talk about this later. But imagine that you have an oracle open for you 24 hours and you can ask anything. That Are you going to feel more supported? more guided, that you have someone on your side that can take you by the hand and guide you where you want to go? Yeah. So. so, Judith, what brought you to this point in your path? Like, what brought you to being this coach and, and helping people just come into more self-ownership? How did you get here? Oh, wow. How many hours do we have? <laughs> it's a longer story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the brief summary is that life put me in this spot. I always have been interested in psychology. I studied astrology and the master in psychology and, and analytical psychology just for fun, for me, for self-growth. But it was because my life was not working. Uh, I needed answers. I believe in going to the root, uh, finding the cause, understanding who you are. And nobody told me at that time that uh, what was happening to me could be solved if I love myself a little bit more. I had a problem of self-love, but nobody comes and says, hey, I have a problem of self-love. Help me love myself a little bit more. We see the consequences. I was so hard on myself. My relationship was not working. I didn't have a job that I love. Uh, from outside, my life was looking great. Like people say, why do you complain? I mean, what is your problem? Why are you depressed? And I was feeling so, so sad. Then I started reading, I started learning, I started looking for 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 my purpose. And and life sent me to the US. I moved here from Spain at the end of 2010. I became a coach. I became a certified happiness trainer and a consultant of the Akashic Records. I finished my training in Reiki and I I continue learning every day because I think that is the way we really can transform our lives. Education from from zero to whatever age you are is 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 the key. Is the key of yeah. being happier. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about: Are there misconceptions about the Akashic records and? When you first came into contact with them, what was your initial thought or feeling? Did you embrace them wholeheartedly or were you kind of suspicious of them? How did that play out? I'm going to start by answering your second questions. When I did the level one, I felt very connected with this. Uh, my first class was like, I have been doing this for all my life. And yeah, then I discovered that for many past lives, I have been connected. And it was a reconnection with the Akashic Records more than a new learning. Everybody can do this. I'm, I'm not gifted, I'm not special. Maybe I have been, I have a little bit more experience. I have been doing it for more time. But I teach people in a weekend how they can access this field of information and everyone, every student gets it. It's not something uh, really difficult. It's just trusting and learning how to receive. We don't go to find information, we receive the information. We're just this pillar of light where we receive. And I'm saying that because it took me a lot of time to 
finally be able to do this level one class on how to access your Akashic records. In Spain, there was a team of Archie Akashic Records Consultants International, that is an organization and the lineage that trained me. Uh, but people from South America was going to Spain and I never like was able to attend. Then I moved to New York, there was no teacher. At that moment, everything was uh, uh, in person. And until I moved to Florida, I couldn't find my, my teacher and the person with whom I trained and I did all the levels. Then I think that it's not what you want to do. It's like you have to wait until you really are ready for that. And, and then the universe provides. And about the um, Akashic records and, and the misconceptions, I just want to say I was having a meeting with a person that does SEO services. And we were looking at the level of research that the word Akashic records and the questions that people ask to Google. And I was amazed, like 40,000 500 people uh, ask questions related with Akashic records. What are they? How you access? What is this? Is the same of uh, mediumship? What it is? Then I think that there are misconceptions because it's not an easy concept to explain. And I think that people think that it's the same as an intuitive reading because consultation of the Akashic Records is based on questions that you can ask, but it's more powerful than that because within the field of the Akashic Records, we can also do healing. It's not only about knowing that you have a pattern of thought. It's about what can I do to heal it? Or that this happened in a past life. What can I do to resolve this issue? Or I have a problem in relationships. Okay, what is what I have to do in order to, to really... Uh, let go of that or do forgiveness work, then when people experience it, they really like are amazed and they get it. But when they don't know what it is, it seems like science fiction. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to grasp. And yet it seems like more people are starting to search for answers that are for lack of a better word, beyond themselves, like beyond their conscious thinking. And so I think people, more people are opening up to the possibility that they could tune into a higher power for some added guidance and added help. And Akashic Records is one of those ways that people are starting to open up and see and explore just a little bit to see, hey, is this something that could really help me on my journey to open up and understand who I am and where I'm from and where I'm going and what I really want to do in life. So I think it's really cool that that so many more people are now coming around to that. It's, it's not by chance that there are many professionals being trained, more teachers, more books published, and more people devoting to that. I, I have heard, and I don't know if it's true or not, I have never asked the cash records that for a period of time, it was this knowledge was not accessible to everyone because there was a bad use of this, then it was in the hands of mystics and, and teachers and priests and some specific people that keep the knowledge. And now is the moment where it's again in the hands of humanity for our growth, our spiritual growth. And, and people think that because the Akashic records are like the journey of your soul, like the book of your soul, where everything about you there is recorded, and it's only about these spiritual matters, but you can access your Akashic records to ask, I have lost my wallet. Uh, it has been like stolen or I have just lost it and, and where it is. For practical advice about, I always tell this story because it's very funny. I had a problem with American Express. They charged me for something like full amount where it should be like in installments. And I was panicking and, and, and I opened my records and said, call. And there was going to be a wonderful person that is going to help you. Everything is going to be resolved. And I was really, that's it. So simple. And that was it. It was a wonderful person that resolved everything. They even reimbursed me the fee of the other bank that charged me because the lack of funds uh, that happened with this mistake, that it was yeah. their mistake. Then it's for mundane and for spiritual uh, important things, this connection with the Akashic records for everything you need. So 
explain the Akashic Records to our listeners so that they can understand, try to understand. What are they? Yeah, let's do that because we have been talking about it and we didn't really give the people a, a, a proper explanation. Imagine that everything about you is recorded. Every experience, every thought, every emotion, everything. Then this one is recorded in a field of information, energy, pure energy, that we call Akashic Records. And in these Akashic Records, where they contain is the journey of your soul. Since the inception of your soul, when you were separated from source, or your past lives, your present incarnation, and the future development of your soul. Considering that you have free will, you are created with free will, and maybe because of a session that you do with an Akashic Records consultant, you decide to change things and you change your future, then future is a pattern of possibilities, but you have the power to change it. But you can ask questions about your future as well. Then in this field of information, it's like when you have your photographs in a phone, and you transfer them to the cloud, then you still have access, but, but the information is not there. Then in this field of information, everything exists, but it's not really as a book. We use the metaphor of a, a, as, as a book because it's easy to understand, but it's more like in video. Right now, for example, this interview that we are having, is recorded, but from your perspective, Crystal, with your thoughts, your feelings at the moment, what you think about me, what you are worried about, the internet, uh, this and that, all of this, and from my perspective, what I feel at the moment, what I think, what I'm about to say, all of this, then that's the reason why we can access the individual records of everyone. Everything has a record. My cat has a record. Your business has a record. Every person, but everything, we can open the records of a house if you want. How, how is possible that we access this field of information? We use like a combination of words, like it's a key that gives us access to that. Let's call it prayer. And when we ask uh, through this prayer, we just ask to, be the, to do this sacred work uh, in the love and in the light. We ask for permission, we ask for protection, we ask to do it correctly and to have access to the information that we need at the moment, that we are ready to receive. The beings that give us this information, we call them masters of the Akashic Records, but it's just a label that we humans need in order to understand things. They are pure energy, they are pure unconditional love. They are divine emissor emissaries of the divine, really divine beings uh, in the sense of that they see us through the eyes of love. They see our perfection, our divine essence, not only the problems that we have as humans right here, right now that we are bringing to the table, to the conversation with them. And these beings that love you so much meet you where you are. It's not that kind of guidance that is pushy, that tells you this is what you have to do. No, it, it's a guidance that helps you to go to the next step, that opens up for you, that helps you to realize who you are and are, what are the options that you have in front of you. The guidance is very specific. I don't think that they give you general messages, but the more you prepare your questions, thinking about the more heartfelt they are, the more open you are to receive. And it makes sense that they can then give you more because you are opening to receive. And that's the important thing here. It's like this conversation. It's, it's like this conversation or any conversation. It's, it's, you ask a question, are you really invested in that conversation back and forth? Or is there a part of you that's thinking about you really want to get back to that game that you're playing or you need to make dinner? What are you going to do? Or what color are you going to paint the ceiling? Like, how vested are you in the conversation that you are having in that moment? And the Akashic Records and the keepers of the records are like, are you really actually here? Or how ready are you for what we're about to give you? They're not going to give you more than you can handle. They're going to meet you right there and say, okay, 
this is what they can handle right now. This is what we're going to give them. And then if they come back and ask again, then we'll give them a little bit more so that they can digest. Because sometimes we're not ready. Sometimes we think we're ready and we're not ready. <laughs> and it's like, no, but it's very important what you just said, because usually a situation that you are experiencing in life have many different layers. Then we clear one layer and then we are ready for the next one. You, have you heard people that say, I have been working on this all my life and I'm still stuck here? No, this is like a spiral process. Like you go deeper and deeper, then you clear something and something else show up. Then it's like a situation can have many different roots. Like you have problems in relationships, maybe because you have ancestral influences on the role as a woman that you have in life. And then you have karmic issues with someone else and this show up. And then you have your heart broken for many times and you cannot trust and you have closed your heart. Then there are different stories that affect the way you feel right now about relationships, how open you are, how ready you are to love again, how much you trust that you can receive love. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for pointing out uh, that. And it's true, sometimes you ask and you don't really want to know the answer. Or you listen to the same recording of the session. A lot of people say like one year and a half after, I still listen to the same recording and I still get new information. Yeah, because words resonate differently. You are a different person. Yeah. And even the same information feels uh, a little bit uh, different as well. Yeah, your lens changes just a little bit. So by the time that you've a year and a half has passed, you look back, your lens is a little bit different and you hear that again and you're like, oh, wait a minute, they were actually telling me this or they were actually telling me that. And oh, so now I can move forward this way because that's really great. It's really fun how it builds upon each other. It builds and it grows and it just opens up and says, here you go, baby. Yeah, and you know when you read a book and you say, oh, I get it. Yeah, that was exactly what I needed. And then you read the same book two years after and say, wow, I didn't get it then. <laughs> then here sometimes it happens. <laughs> yeah, I recently did that. I read a book and I thought, oh, man, I should be taking notes because this book is so good. And I really want to be able to go back to these notes. But I didn't take notes. And I knew for a fact that the next time I read that book, I would get completely different insights and just amazing mind-blowing ideas that were completely different than what I read the first time and I was just like oh that was a missed opportunity that was such a missed opportunity so and when we we don't record our regular con conversations you know we don't record our conversations with friends or family or or loved ones and yet every now and then I wish that we could because playing that back playing that moment back where you actually hear them say I love you and you're a beautiful person and one time you might not actually hear it but then six months later or a year later when you've done some personal work you're like oh I'm starting to see myself through your eyes and that's pretty cool I love myself too that's really amazing the worry crystal because all the conversations have recorded in the Akashic records and you can just take the level one and you know how we work with the records after the class in the class you you learn through processes you practice since moment one on how to open the records and how to receive information everyone receives differently some people are more like they listen some people see images some people change depending on the moment but you have the feeling that you are within your Akashic records. But then we ask questions through journaling, because if you try to just receive, you may feel like you are in your mind. And of course you are receiving because you have this constant like thoughts <laughs> coming to your mind, but that's not the Akashic records, that's your conscious, normal conscious, like all of this. Then what we do is we have a journal, we write the question, and then we wait to receive the answer. And that's a very particular way of working first, because there is a record of the conversations, as you were saying, you can go backwards and see, oh, how, how much I have evolved, how much I have trans transformed myself. You can see information that you never put in practice, but they gave you. 
and uh, it's there. It's still there. Then it's it's easier this way because then by writing you make it physical. It's not just an idea that pops up in your mind. It's not the intuition like a, a gut feeling. It's it's bigger than that. I yeah, I love it. I'm so excited. So. Judith and I are going to open my Akashic Records, and I do have a couple of questions for her. Now, as she mentioned before, the the way that you do this is that there is an invocation, a prayer that we will do, and then we'll go ahead and ask the questions. Because of the nature of this, we're actually not going to include the prayer for you guys. I'm technically going to pause this recording so that we can do that opening. And then uh, you guys will be a part of the rest of our opening and our reading. So I just want to let you guys know that that's kind of how a session would go. You would go, you would talk about things, you would then have a prayer and open the records, and then you could talk about your questions. You could work through any challenges or information that comes through that you might need to deal with, and then you keep going with life. So um, we'll be right with you. Crystal, your Akashic records are open now, and you can start with your questions or topics of conversation. So my first question right now is, how can I improve my own sense of connection with myself and um, those people that I'm serving? words came immediately before I asked the question, the way when you were talking, just they were saying permission and not being hard on yourself. There is a sense of I have to do it better, I have to serve better, I have to be better. And this is no need for perfection at all. Eh? It's just this one thing puts you in a state of nervousness that disconnects you then it's giving yourself permission to be you, that you are enough as you are. There is nothing else that you really need to do because the more you you are, the better you serve. Then make sense. It's relax, take a deep breath. Literally. Yeah. <clears throat> And know that there is nothing different that needs to be happening right now. When you accept things as they are, you will see more clearly what's the next step, what's the next step, what's coming. You will feel like more into like, let's lean to that. No, I'm not going to try that. Everybody's doing that, but I don't want to do that you will also be more present in the sessions. You, you want to manage everything at the same time and you have a great capability to do that because you touch many things at the same time and you're, you are like very expansive. Like you have to, to stay where you are. Don't get distracted by the next thing. Being here, the next thing will come to you instead of you wanting to go to the next thing. Okay. This is very, it, well, it's very apropos because my husband and I just had a conversation about not necessarily this exact topic, um, and but, but along these lines. And he was like, just narrow down and relax and you do you. And that's very much what you're telling me is just you do you. It's okay. And uh, I find it very... Um, just heartwarming that that they are echoing exactly what my husband has been saying to it's okay honey you're doing great just let it be so and the Kashi records are very funny and they are saying you have a husband why you need us ha 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 they're like ha ha uh-huh he's in tune got it Love it. yeah then you are all over the place uh when you relax you will see your life transform more balance, 
more productivity and more abundance all together just for stopping, taking a breath and being where you are. Well, you guys heard it here. I need to stop and take a breath. So I'm going to be working on that. <laughs> Whoa. Mm. I want to go on to my next question and I really want people to understand that this one could be a vulnerable question for me and yet I'm really intrigued to find the answer. So um, are there any? <laughs> it's not are there. I'm already being told there are. What are the limiting beliefs in my subconscious that I need to be aware of right now? It's, what is coming first is related with the first question that you ask. There are many things in this unconscious mind stored, but we are going to talk about what is more powerful at the moment. That's the way we feel we can serve you better. And the first thing that came up was this, am I good enough? that it's related with the childhood. It's related with the childhood because it's the moment where you learn that you had to show up in a certain way to receive love. There was a point of connection at that moment that we can let it go. And I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through the process when we finish with the information, we will do some healing about that. And it's also uh, connected with family patterns. It comes from the le genetic lineage of you, like a family of people where things have to be hard. Things have to be hard in order to be important, in order to be uh, worth it. Then if I don't arrive there, is that I'm not good enough because other people looking around do those things but when i see reality full of difficulties and not full of possibilities or potentiality uh that is the way it is the difficulties show up i see them even other people don't and then there is a constant fight with yourself that is what they were explaining in the first uh question and that's the reason why it was mentioned, giving yourself permission. Giving yourself permission to be you is, I'm not gonna go all over and overdo and overexert and not taking care of myself just because in my mind I have this goal, this, even if it's a purpose, doesn't matter, this mission, it can be transforming the, the world. And it's a great idea, but you cannot do it denying the love for yourself in the process because it goes against you your responsibility is first with you and then with the rest of the world this is a this is a pattern that i'm absolutely aware of and this is a constant um it's a reminder it's a constant battle if you will it's a conversation that i often have with um my husband about just like i absolutely believe and agree that we have these hardships that come down through our dna through our family lineage and these learned beliefs and patterns and so I have recognized these and I fight with them and I work with them all the time. And yet letting them go completely is evidently not as readily easy to do as I would like them to be. And let's do it because you don't want to be in conflict with yourself. Nope, I don't then we have certain points in the hands called grace points and we have some prayers let me ask them how are we going to do this exactly
Okay, the first thing that they want us to do is to start with a point. All the grace points are in the right hand. In the center of the right hand, you have a point called main grace point. This, what it does when we uh, subtle, like feel the pressure in here, is that we can release the energy that is contracted regarding this topic that we are talking, but allows you to integrate everything that you have received until the moment, like to make it yours and to create a more positive reference point. And the only thing that you have to do is just press, set the intention. I mean, grace is a, a divine grace is something you receive just because you ask. There is nothing you need to do, but the intention is, I want this, I'm ready to receive. And when you feel it's done, let me know. Wow. <laughs> you may feel or may not feel uh, the movement of the energy, it doesn't matter. But there is a moment where you feel, okay, I'm done for now. I'm going to tell you guys, my. <clears throat> it is done. My heart is racing and I am just emotional right now. Do you need a tissue? Do you need some water? Do you have a glass of water near you? You can take a sip. <laughs> that's very important. This is a safe place first, and that's very important for you. Then, you know that tears, uh, your heart, it's, it's a way to release. Yeah. Thank you. When you are ready, we continue. That's not all. I am ready. Under the small finger in the right hand, we have a point called emotional release grace point. It directs your consciousness to disconnect and clear all the emotions related with this that we are clearing. It's feeling of making it harder. Having to earn it, not being good enough. And the last grace point that we will use prayers, it's reconnecting with the original innocence grace point is at the end of the palm before the wisdom starts in the right hand. This directs your consciousness and move the consciousness to a position of original innocence regarding this. How beautiful is it? Yeah. So say that again. What is this one doing? It's called returning to the original innocence grace point. And it moves your consciousness or directs your consciousness to move you to a position of original innocence regarding this that we are clearing. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. They are happy that you are going through this. Yeah, the healing comes with a sense of happiness. We have a prayer to release energy patterns, and energy pattern is anything. It can be a, a pattern of thought or behavior, like sadness, anger, depression, uh, whatever it is, frustration, are energy patterns. Then I'm going to read it aloud, and you just please follow, but first set the intention that you really, really want to release that, that you kind of give them this, and they take it, they recycle this energy. So I am repeating what you say? Yeah, you will repeat what I say, but first set the intention that you know what are you doing, what you want to release this energy pattern. So my intention is to release that energy pattern so that I can be more open and secure in myself and my gift to the world. Yeah, you will see the results. What it's important for us, they say the Akashic Records, is that you really are ready to release it. They cannot take from you what you are not giving them. Then are you ready to give it? Yes. <laughs> okay, then that's it. The prayer starts with several names, Father, Mother, God, the Spirit, Source. Do you have any preference? You can say universe. I just, my higher power, yeah. Higher power, then we will use that. Are you ready? Should we read it together? Perfect. 
higher power, we ask that this energy pattern. Higher power, we ask that this energy pattern. Be sent on its spiritual evolution. Be sent on its spiritual evolution. For the highest good. For the highest good. And mutual benefit. And mutual benefit. Of everyone concerned. Of everyone concerned. And we are going to close the process. When you feel ready. It's something that we do to let go, to release. Uh, I will send you all of this material if you want, Crystal. I do it with my clients after the sessions. Doesn't matter if your records are open or closed. Grace is something you can receive any moment just by asking. Then anyone can use this. Then there is a prayer. It's called forgiveness prayer, but it's not forgiveness in the sense of, oh, I have to be good and I have to let it go. It's the forgiveness that sets you free. That when you release this that we have been talking about, you are really free. Then it's material to form give to them again you give it to them they recycle the energy mm. beautiful ready to read it together yes the intention is there yes okay if there is anyone or anything if there is anyone or anything that has hurt me in the past that has hurt me in the past knowingly or unknowingly knowingly or unknowingly i forgive and release it i forgive and release it if i have hurt anyone or anything in the past if i have hurt anyone or anything in the past knowingly or unknowingly knowingly or unknowingly i forgive and release it i forgive and release it if I have hurt myself in the past. If I have hurt myself in the past. Knowingly or unknowingly. Knowingly or unknowingly. I forgive and release it. I forgive and release it. You can change the wording and you can just say the last paragraph that is the one that connects the most with you right now about yourself. This pattern, certain effects, or this inner conflict that we have been talking, this battle with yourself, like it's never enough, not you, the circumstances. It's a lot of energy invested in that, and it puts you in a position of asking for validation also around you, because if I don't feel I'm doing enough, I'm being enough, then I have to look around for someone to say, it's okay it's okay then the most important healing is the, the permission that you will give to yourself to be just as you are and that's enough and the acceptance of this moment as it is of your life as it is there is always room for improvement but you play with what you have and you are grateful and you appreciate what you have achieved. That's why it's enough, because it's yours. I have to tell you guys, I'm a bit lost for words right now. Um, Judith hits a lot of things on the head. She hits a lot of truths. And I know that those truths come from that connection to me and my records and who I am and this is a journey. It is absolutely 100% a journey. And as you can see, even I am learning and growing and processing and trying to be even better in my life for myself and for those people that are around me. So in saying that, I want every one of you guys listening to remember that it's a process. 
It is absolutely a process. And you're going to peel away one layer and feel great. And later, you're going to peel a little bit deeper and you're going to say, hmm. I'm so glad I got to that one too. And maybe it'll be less of an onion and more of a cake. There are layers to our healing, to our progress, to our lives. And we get these little guideposts. We get these little gifts upon the path that help us to peel those layers back gently or not so gently so that we can heal them and shift them and move them and just feel, be even better here in our own, the way that we show up in our own lives. So thank you, Judith, for, yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you for the opportunity and for those that are listening and they're gonna close your records by making a, like a summary, like a, Maybe they want to add something, but they want to really honor the words that you have said. The realization of that, that you share with your audience right now, is the key to freedom for you. Knowing that it's a process, one step at a time, one day after another. That's the calmness that you need to continue with the rest of your life. And your heart holds a big capability for love. Remember that love forgives, that love respects, that love sets you free because it allows you just to feel its guidance. Know that you are loved as you are, unconditionally, that we only see the goodness within you and nothing else. And it's so, so, so big. Thank you. And with this, we are going to close your records, just saying thank you to the masters, teachers, and loved ones for the information, the guidance, and the healing that they provide for us during this mini session with you. And now your records are closed. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. What a wonderful experience and thank you for your vulnerability and for the opportunity to do this, to, to really show how, how this consultation of the cash records works. Like, yeah, that, yeah. If you are remotely interested, I encourage you to dive into Akashic Records and how they can serve you and help you. I like to offer a 25% discount, but to those people that want to do two Akashic consultations instead of one, because as you can see, with two questions and the healing and all of this, then people will come with a lot of expectations with a long list of questions and sometimes they feel pressure during the session. They want to put everything there. They are not receiving because they want to ask the next question. Then I have realized how important it is that they feel relaxed enough to know that there is another session coming. They don't have to do it immediately. They can wait one, two months between sessions, process the information that they have received in the first one. But it's not just the financial help that of course, it helps, the 25% discount is a lot, but it's because it gives you the opportunity to go deeper, to enjoy more the first session, to be more relaxed, and to get more out of it. And how long is one session usually with you? It's uh, one hour since the moment we open the records until we close them. Uh, of course, we get a little bit longer. The first session, you have to think about one hour and a half because by the time we say hello, I'll answer any question you may have, I'll explain you the process, and we have this one hour, and then the goodbye, the, the like, what do you have to do with the information and, and the payment and all of this, one hour and a half. But the session properly is 60 minutes, yeah. And how many, like we only had time for two, 
questions, but how many questions do you typically are you able to cover in an hour session? Around 10 questions or topics. And, and again, it doesn't have to be a concrete question. It can be like a topic of conversation. And you see how you had two different questions, but they were interrelated. They wanted to talk about the same. Then usually we see that, that you have many questions, but there is a theme around the session. And uh, it's very funny because people say, OK, I have first question, second question. And they're asking number two, and they are getting the answer to number eight and to number nine. And uh, it's like if the masters have read your list beforehand and they know already you what you are asking. And only, I don't know because I don't need to know. I'm just an intermediate person between the masters of the cash records and the client. I don't, I don't need to know anything <laughs> in advance. I'm here just to give the information without interpreting. But uh, I have done sessions with one question and, and continue the conversation and more and more and more and one topic leads to another because it's not only about relationships, this affects your health and this is connected with the past lives and this is connected with experiences that you had and questions that you always wanted to know. <laughs> then yeah. totally depends on, on how deep are your questions. And realize, guys, you may not think that the question is very deep and yet you may get a much deeper answer than you ever thought possible because that information is just waiting to be given to you, waiting to come out so that you can just feel freer. So, and, and like Judith said, you've written it down. If you have written it down, they already know what you're asking. They already know what your heart is because you have put it onto paper. You have brought it out of the nebulous of thoughts and organized it enough to be able to say, this is what's really burning on my mind right now. And this is what I want an answer to. You made it real, which means that now you can bring out that truth. It's absolutely beautiful. Judith, what are some of the ways that our listeners can like connect with you? How can they find you? If they want uh, more information, the best is that they send me an email to judithmcosta at hotmail.com or go to my website uh, subscribe there uh, as soon as you enter there is a place to do that be in touch or go to the contact form where you can find my telephone number give me a call I will explain everything you need to know answer any question you may have and if you just want to schedule a session send me an email and let's do it mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us today thank you so much for opening up my Akashic Records and giving me some beautiful guidance. I sincerely appreciate that. And if anybody has been intrigued, I really sincerely encourage you to go check out Judith. And and if not Judith, but you're really excited or intrigued by Akashic Records, find what works for you. You know, I'm going to tell you this, find what really feels right to you and explore that. This could be a new avenue for you to really do some self-care and connect deeper with who you are, who you want to be, and where you want to go. So Judith, thank you so very much for being with me today. Yeah, thank you so much. And I just want to add to what you say that the Akashic Records transformed my life, my business as well, but my life in a way that I have never imagined. And, uh, and again, there are many ways to arrive to the same place and destination. I, I have myself many tools <laughs> that I use, but this is a special. This is powerful. This is really amazing. Yeah. And now you have experienced it. Then allow yourself to process what you receive and what it. You don't have to do anything. The energy uh, will happen. And, and this is what happens after a session. There is a shift no matter what, with or without the part of the healing, there is there's a transformation within you. That's the reason why this is incredible. And I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to just sit with it. I'm just like, ah. yeah. So thank you. And thank you. And until next time, we'll see you guys next week here on Breathe In, Breathe Out. I hope this moment of self-care and healing brought you some hope and peace. 
I'm Crystal Joukowsky on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and I hope you check us out and follow along for more content coming soon. I look forward to being with you again here on Breathe In, Breathe Out. Until next time, take care.